they shared information and there was an interest from Professor Manai to say we would really like to share your, your experience and knowledge about community engagement. And that is the reason why we here. We then started communication with him and he promised that I'll definitely make sure that I can go South Africa. So Dr. Peter is here to share that experience with us. And we thank Professor Manai for that engagement and collaboration that continued for months. Every faculty board, it was on the agenda. So I present Dr. Fakunte to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Prof. Um, I think I should begin with a couple of, um, I would call them preliminaries or some narrative snapshots of what preceded before uh, I decided to visit the campus. I do come from Cameroon. If you know of any African nation that uh, worships soccer as a religion, that's my village of origin. But I've been living this days for the past 16 years. I do work for the University of Indianapolis. I'm a professor of uh, global languages and applied linguistics. Um, I do wear two hats there. I'm the chair of that department, Global Language and Cross-Cultural Studies. I'm also the, one of the deep directors of a newly created center called Mega Center. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that when I talk about our successes. Um, I'm in charge of, as a <coughs> director of one of those, one of the directors in the center, I take, I'm in charge of curriculum design and delivery. Um, so, as the dean has said, we, I met with, with uh, Prof. Lanahan during the civil service learning symposium last year, and we uh, started talking about the need for inter-institutional collaboration and, and partnerships. And um, uh, actually, when I was here, I'm here for summer research. Some kind of summer. I've been in Cape Town attending a conference on languages and, and linguistics in the southern, southern hemisphere. And so, Prof said, like, since I'm here, I should come and share some ideas on what we do in Indiana in, at my university in Indianapolis. And I said that was a golden opportunity because, like the uh, Dean said, we've been talking very much, uh, so much about the need for us to create a, an MOU that will enable two universities to build capacity, come up with some exchanges, and empower, empower students. So uh, what I intend to do today is to talk a little bit about some theoretical, well, I suppose we'll tell you guys what we do in our university, and then I will talk a little bit about some theoretical concepts that uh, normally guide my curriculum design and service learning. And then I'll talk about my own project that I've done, which has been uh, widely received by the, by the university community and beyond. And then I'll talk very briefly about some of the challenges that we face and so how we try to grapple with, it, with them. Okay? So that's my approach today. Um, my university is it's a pretty young university. It was started in 1902. And we take, we take service learning very seriously. Uh, because the motto of my university is education for service. And so service learning and community engagement is really part and parcel of our uh, educational core approach. Um, we have a unit headed by a, an assistant dean of uh, in interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary studies slash service learning. Under her we have a director who is in charge of service learning and community engagement. And under that director we have a student assistant that takes care of the administrative stuff, okay? Um, so that's where we are. I thought, so some of my discussion points would be uh, some of the things I'm talking about here. How do you define service learning uh, as part and parcel of community engagement? How, what is social capital? How do you build social capital using curriculum design and community engagement using stakeholders and so on and so forth? How do you motivate uh, faculty and, and students to get involved in service learning and community engagement. How do you even conceptualize the, the design of a course in service learning that will empower students and enable them to, in, to achieve the envisioned uh, uh, learning outcomes? And then I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the pedagogical design, uh, you know, paradigm that I've used in, in, in teaching my own course. Um, and then I will talk a little bit about uh, my own project in the community in India. Working definition, what is service learning? Some, it's generally, uh, there's tons of definitions about what, what we mean when we talk about community, community uh, sorry, uh, service learning, 
we do have, at the University of Indianapolis, we have two facets of community engagement. The one facet is service learning, which is a credit-bearing uh, curriculum approach that we design courses and students take it as part of their curriculum, their core, core uh, curriculum design, curriculum uh, initiative that they have to do in order to earn credits toward their graduation. So each course has a credit value and students will take that and that will be included in their um, graduation uh, credit total. Generally it's about 120 credits they have to do to get their back to bachelor's, either at BA or BS. And so Barbara Jacob, Jacob B, to, uh, those of you who are, in, who are involved in community uh, service learning, you know this is a, this is a, this is a heavy weight uh, in, in, in service learning. She defines service learning as a form of experiential education in which students engage in activities that address human and community needs together with structured opportunities for reflection designed to achieve desired learning outcomes. I think the word learning outcomes is very important here. So this, in my opinion, this definition uh, does englobe uh, the concept of social capital, which could be defined as follows. It's, oh, uh, there's something that has to be. Uh, the networks that we create in the community in order to be able to, I don't know what's going on here with the, with the problem, but uh, the, so these social capital really involves tapping into the networks in the community that would in, in, you know, empower uh, instructors or professors of service learning to tap into what we call indigenous knowledge and build that into curric curriculum design. Uh, and indigenous knowledge, of course, is knowledge that is unique to a particular, I think that's a problem now. That's unique to a particular to a culture and I know people, when I talk about indigenous knowledge in the United States, people may be wondering, what is, this, what, is, what is it that is unique about the United States that you talk about indigenous knowledge? The U.S. is not a monolith. It is a multicultural society, including globing African Americans, including Hispanics, englobing actually poor white folks in the States. And people come from Asia. We have Hmongs with different cultural values, different indigenous knowledge bases that need to be tapped into when you design a course that is targeting communities because they are very, very culture specific. They are even also language specific in the United States. Um, why do we really uh, underscore the importance of service learning as a component of community engagement? The one thing that motivates most of us at my university, and I'm going to talk a little bit more down the line, is the need to expose our students to experiential learning. You know, learning hands-on, getting to the community, interacting with community stakeholders, interacting with the community leaders, and trying to exchange ideas that will empower students in a global and multicultural community like the United States. Another thing that is serving as a big motivational factor is for us to be able to bridge the gap between the university and the community because the tendency for most institutions of higher learning is to function as, an, as a silo. I, I mentioned that during my talk with my colleagues yesterday uh, uh, with uh, Professor Monahan. When you, you, come, you, you, do, you fail to create a bridge between the university and the community, the university functions as an island and that disconnect could actually disempower students. And so the idea of creating a link between the university and the community um, in order to be able to tap into in indigenous knowledge systems is one of the motivating factors. Another one is to uh, contribute to the quest for uh, solutions that are very, very community oriented. You know, uh, it could be um, things as simple as empowering students to gain life skills. It could be things as simple as empowering students to understand uh, the need for community-specific problems like, like food insecurity. We do have communities in the United States that are not food sufficient because they grow up in, in disadvantaged communities. I'm going to talk about that when I talk about my Laurel Wood project. Another thing is to groom students and provide them with opportunity, what we call Plan B career opportunities. Because when a student, say, majors in I don't know what you know, communications or uh, linguistics, and graduates from the university and cannot find a job in the major area, that student should be able to fall back on what we call a contingent uh, skill sets 
to be able to build a new 